Did it? Okay. So I'm going to do uh, present my screen. We're going to keep working on the Jane Goodall story. So my life with the chimpanzees. Still on Google Classroom. So let's go ahead and pull that up. So my life with the chimpanzees. We are still going to work with making meaning, yes. No, we're going to keep working on it next week as well, actually. So the test on this story will actually be next week. I think we're doing it on Friday, maybe? It's either Thursday or Friday. I don't remember which one. We talked about it yesterday, but I already forgot. So, Okay, while you guys are getting that pulled up, I'm just going to do a little bit of a summary. Um, you guys did have to write a summary of it yesterday, but I will talk about it instead. Um, so it's about Jane Goodall. She is a really famous researcher of just African wildlife, I would say, because yesterday um, we learned that she also studied some lions and stuff as well. So she doesn't only focus on chimpanzees. That's her main one that she likes to research, but she also will research other things that show up because it's not like chimpanzees don't interact with other things, right? Huh? Yeah, exactly. Chimpanzees are not the only animals on Earth. They interact with so many other things. So she more studies the area that they live in versus just the chimpanzees, right? So, um... They go to um, Gombe National Park in Tanzania, Africa. They're there for, uh, well, when they first get there, the chimpanzees are, like, calling warnings to each other. They're not happy that there are humans there. How long did it take for the chimpanzees to even, yeah, it took a year, almost, like, between a year and a year and a half. It wasn't specific, but basically, they, the chimpanzees did not show any like form of wanting to be around the humans for an, like a year. Um, after that, David Graybeard was the first chimpanzee that walked into her camp and took a banana. And then it kind of went from there, right? We started seeing, well, we didn't see, we started reading that um, more of them would come to camp. The video, if you didn't watch it at home, I would watch it. It's a cool video. Oh, I might have deleted it. I'll put it back up. But the video was kind of cool. It showed the monkeys or the chimpanzees. I'm going to do that all the time. Um, coming into the camp and they got aggressive, but then the humans figured out how to kind of keep that aggression away. Um, but after a few years of researching there, um, there was like a dude that came out to Africa that was like recording Jane Goodall doing her stuff. Um, they fell in love. She left to get married. I can't find this hair. Um, there it is. And uh, she got her PhD, did more schooling, and then uh, they went back, established the research camp there that has just grown and expanded. And that's pretty much it, right? Did I miss anything major? No? Sound good? All right. So that is the synopsis of our story, our summary. Uh, we are going to do two sections again today under making meaning. So. Um, we have done concept vocabulary, the first read, comprehension check, and research. Um, just as a uh, reminder, the comprehension check is graded. Um, I already did some grading on it. There's some of you guys that still need to go back and finish it. Some of you guys started it, didn't finish it, so I didn't grade it just yet. So just make sure you finish all six questions here. And, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. There's your reminder. We are going to skip down to close read the text, though. So, close read. So go ahead and get close read open. Guys, in a lot of ways, chimpanzees are just like kids. You put a pile of food out there, you guys are probably going to play with kids. That's why they give you the food in your little styrofoam container. Make sure everybody's yellow. You don't have any bites going on. It's 
All righty. So close read the text. This number one is an example of what we're going to do. And um, we're just going to skip it. We don't need to look at the example. We have done this before where we're going to go into the story, highlight some things, and explain whatever their question is. So we're actually going to skip number one. If you want to, in the notebook for number one, just write, he skipped it. That's fine. That way you know that we skipped it. Okay, so you can type that out if you'd like to. Huh? Yeah, in the notebook for number one. Just so that when you're going back to check that you've done everything, you know that we skipped that one question. You don't need to do it. Um, if you put it for everyone, the ones that I go back and grade, you're going to get zeros on. So, Okay, so we skipped number one. Number two um, wants us to reread it. That's 25 minutes that we won't get back. So we're not going to do that. That's why I did a little summary there for you. So we're not going to reread it. We are, however, going to look at number three. Okay? This one says, revisit a section of the text that you found important during your first read. So we need to decide which part we think is important about this. Um, and then we're going to go back and reread maybe like two or three paragraphs and annotate what we thought is important. So maybe we've already highlighted things that we think are important. So what did we already highlight? Um, this is all, you guys did this part on your own. When you scroll through your text, what did you guys hi highlight as important to you? Uh, I highlighted all of the keywords. Okay, so you highlighted the vocabulary. Okay. Okay. So you guys all highlighted a few things. Good. So Down said that he highlighted when David Graybeard came. Marty, what paragraph are you talking about? Where's it at? Paragraph 61. What's it about? Okay, so that's where she decided, hey, I need to create a research center for paragraph 61. I like that. Now, Elijah, what you said where she noticed that the chimpanzees were using the uh, tools. Yeah, so those are all some pretty important things. Charlie talked about um, highlighting the vocabulary words, which are also important. So, paragraph 61, okay, because I scrolled all the way down to it. It says, there were always more fascinating things to watch and record, more people to help everything to help write everything down. What had started as a little camp for Mom and I ended up, six years later, as a research center where students would come and collect information for their degrees, and I was the director. So we have this paragraph, 61. Why would the author, <laughs> Jane Goodall is the author, why would she include this paragraph? Why is this an important paragraph? Good. So Jane Goodall included, I'm going to say included paragraph 61 so that we know where we're looking. To show how much the research had grown over the years. Okay. So she includes paragraph 61 just to show how much the one little trip grew into a whole research center where she was the director of everyone, which is really cool. I'll give you a minute to type that one out.
heck that? It's John's. You both look, take you. Look, look at where I'm at. Where are you at? Where are you at? I am at McDonald's. No. <laughs> I'm at Mickey D's. We're going to Phoenix right now. That sounds fun. Is the teacher is. asking him? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that microphone was on. <laughs> what was I yelling to? <laughs> My bad. Miss <laughs> Jones, do you know what my mom's going to be for uh, Halloween? Not Christmas. No, what? Uh, she's going to be one of those ghosts from Pac-Man. Oh, that's pretty cool. He always, All right. From Pac-Man. He always starts random conversations with his teacher. You know the <laughs> microphone's still <Yeah>. on. Oh. <laughs> All right. For, uh, so there's number three. All good with number three? Okay. So now, we have a couple more things that we are going to answer. Um, we're going to start with close read paragraph eight. So that means that everybody needs to go to paragraph eight. All the way up to paragraph eight. We were at 61. All the way up. Okay. Then it says, in paragraph eight, mark the repetition of words that describe Dr. Goodall's experience with the chimps after the first day. So I'm going to read it to you guys. And as I read, highlight the words or the phrases that are repeated, that repeat a couple of times. So paragraph eight, early the next morning, I set out to search for chimpanzees. I had been told by the British game ranger in charge of Gombe not to travel about the mountains by myself, except near camp. Otherwise, I had to take one of the game scouts with me, so I set off with Adolf. The first day, we saw two chimps feeding in a tall tree. As soon as they saw us, they leapt down and vanished. The next day, we saw no chimps at all, nor the day after, nor the day after that. So, what repeats there? Yeah. We have nor the day after. And nor the day after that. So the last two sentences I'm gonna highlight. Nor the day after and nor the day after that. Okay. And then we have two questions to answer. So over in our notebook, first question we have to answer is, why do you think Dr. Goodall chose to repeat those words? Why would she repeat them? What's the point? Okay, so she repeated the words. So but they didn't see any chimpanzees for a while, right? And then while you type that, the second question there is how does this repetition help communicate Goodall's experience to the reader? So what does it help us feel about her experience? What do we learn? Yeah. And so it took a long time. Um, they didn't see him right away. So they just had to wait. Um, so it shows that they had to wait and wait and wait. Might as well use our own repetition, right? And it really gives you an idea of how long they had to wait because they would just, the chimpanzees would see the humans and they'd be like, we out, and they would take off. They were not used to seeing humans at all. 
Once you're done typing that out, you can close it. Alrighty, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. You should still be able to see what I wrote if you need to keep typing. So our next one is close read paragraph 17. Let's go find paragraph 17. All right. This time when we annotate and when we highlight, we're going to mark the details that show how the chimps were behaving and then mark other details that show how the baboons behave. So we are, let's use two different colors here. Choose one color to highlight how the chimpanzees behave and then choose a different color to show and highlight how the baboons behave. Okay, so two different highlighting colors. Um, and when you highlight something, it just shows up, right? You can choose yellow, pink, green, or blue. Whichever one works for you. Okay. So, cha not chapter, <laughs> paragraph 17. During those months of gradual discovery, the chimps very slowly began to realize that I was not so frightening after all. Even so, it was almost a year before I could approach one within 100 yards. And that is not really close. The baboons got used to me much more quickly. Indeed, they became a nuisance around our camp by grabbing any food that we accidentally left lying on the table. Okay, so let's start with the chimps. What are the what are the chimpanzees' behavior? Not a whole lot to highlight about them. Yeah, the chimps were super slow to realize that they that they're not scary. Good. So that's kind of it for the chimps, right? They, they're just very slowly realizing that they're not frightening. What about the baboons? They got used to them a lot quicker. I'm going to do that in pink, different color. What else do the baboons do? Take out the food in their camp. Good. They would grab food that they accidentally left on the table. I'm going to do that one pink as well. So there's a difference between the baboons and the chimpanzees here. The chimpanzees are a little bit more cautious, a little bit more worried about these humans, and the baboons are like, we're going to take your food. So I still wouldn't um, put up a fight with the baboon, though. They're pretty strong and vicious as well if they want to be. Um, I don't know who would win. Do you know, Mr. Turner? I don't know. I mean, baboons are a mean, nasty critters. I mean, they got canines that are like you know, two inches long. So if they got a hold of a chimp, they'd probably kill a chimp. So hopefully the chimp is smarter and maybe he'll pick up a stick and just flip them or something. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That would be a good who would win book. I agree. All right. Let's go ahead and do our notebook here and answer our two questions. First question Why does Goodall contrast, so compare and contrast, why does she contrast the chimps and the baboons' behavior? Why would she do that? Okay. To show the difference between them. Any other ideas? Okay, to show how easily the baboons get used to people. So let's say, good old, spell it right. Um, good old describes their behaviors um, to show the differences between the two animals. And then Elijah's answer that he just gave actually answers the second question. 
What does it reveal about the chimpanzees? What does it tell us about the chimpanzees? Give me guys a second to catch up. And when I said I thought this would take like a half hour. Huh? I think this is as big as it's gonna get. I don't think the Zoom. Yeah, this is as big as it's going to get, Dallin. Okay. Now we need to finish that sentence. What does this um, comparing? The baboons and the chimpanzees. What does it tell us about the chimpanzees? Yeah, they take longer to get used to humans, right? This tells us that the chimpanzees take longer to get used to humans. About yeah. Yeah, sorry, one sec. 32. Okay, we do about one more minute here and then we'll look at our next one. All right, I'm going to close this. You should still be able to see it up near the top. And uh, our next one is paragraph 32. So I think what we're going to do is finish these next two close read ones, and then I'm going to explain the next section and have you guys do that one on your own. So close read paragraph 32. I'm going to scroll down to 32. Well, that's a short one. Mm -hmm. So paragraph 32, while I read it, it says, to mark the punctuation that Dr. Goodall uses to describe her reaction to the news about the chimpanzee visit. What does punctuation mean? Um, punctuation Good, it's things like periods, question marks, exclamation points, all those different things. So as I read, huh? that's a dash. It is a type of punctuation, yeah. What about the period afternoon? That is a punctuation mark, yeah. So um, I'm going to read this paragraph, and you guys mark the, the important punctuation. There's some punctuation that's used all the time, but there's some in there that are a little bit 
more useful for this paragraph, right? It says, this was fantastic news. For months, the chimps had been running off when they saw me. No one had, or now one had actually visited my camp. Perhaps he would come again. Good, so we have um, this dash as part of our punctuation. And then what else do we have that's important about that punctuation? The exclamation point is pretty important. Periods are pretty common. Do they really give you any new information? Do they kind of make you feel any different? Yeah, they're just kind of statements. Like, this is fantastic news. Almost, you, she could have probably put an exclamation point after that, right? But she did not. She only put one after that one sentence. Why do you think she did that? Why would she put that exclamation point there? That's our question. Because, it, because it's exciting. Because it's exciting for her. And that actually answers both questions. She used, because the, the second question is, what does it reveal about her reaction? We know she's excited that this chimpanzee visited her. So she chose this punctuation. She used an exclamation mark. I can't show today. To show she was excited that a chimpanzee visited their camp. I'm pretty sure this is right after the first one visited their camp. Yeah. David Graybeard. Okay, I'll give you a second to type that out. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and close this one, leave it up there so that you guys can still see it. And I'm going to look at our next one. This is the last one I'm going to do with you, and then I'll explain the next section. So close read paragraphs 48 through 49. So I'm going to scroll down to 48 and 49. Are they long? Oh, they are. Okay, that's fine. 48 and 49. So while I read these out loud to you guys, you're going to mark the words that describe how the chimpanzees look and how they behave. If you would like to, you can use two different colors, one color for how they look and a different color for how they behave, or you can use the same color. It's up to you. But the two things you're marking is what they look like and how they behave. Are you ready? All right. Um, once you've been close to chimps for a while, they are easy to tell apart as your classmates. Their faces look different, and they have different character characters. David Graybeard, for example, was a calm chimp who liked to keep out of trouble. But he was also very determined to get his own way. If he arrived in camp and couldn't find any bananas, he would walk into my tent and search. Afterward, all was chaos. It looked as though some burglar had raided the place. Goliath was a much more excitable, impetuous, temp um, had a, a much more excitable, impetuous temperament. William, with his long shaped face, was shy and timid. Old Flo was easy to identify. She had a bulbous nose and ragged ears. She came to camp with her infant daughter, whom I named Fifi, and her juvenile son, uh, Fagan? 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 Sometimes. Adolescent Fabin came too. It was from Flo that I first learned that in the wild, female chimps have only one baby every five or six years. 
the older offspring, even after they have become independent, still spend a lot of time with their mothers and all the different family members help one another. Alrighty. So let's start with, I'm going to use two colors. Let's start with sentences or phrases that tell me how chimpanzees look, what they look like. What did you guys find there? What do they look like? Okay, so we had in paragraph 49, they talk about flow, having bulbous nose and ragged ears. Bulbous means that it's kind of big and bumpy, weird looking. And ragged ears probably means that they were kind of a little bit messed up. Um, they don't look as like pretty, but that's okay. What else can we say about what they looked like? Good. So William had a long shaped face. That's the shape of his face. Anything else about what they looked like? I don't know if I read, remember anything else. That's more how he behaves, not what he looks like. That's, yeah. Again, that's probably more how he behaves than what he looks like. We're thinking like physical characteristics. Is there anything else about their physical characteristics, what they look like? No, I don't see anything else. All right, so let's go ahead and do the behaviors. I'm going to use a different color, how they behave, what they act like. What can I highlight for that? Calm. So David Graybeard was calm, was a calm chimp. Oh, I got you. Um, David Graybeard is also a determined chimp. He knew exactly what he wants. Yeah, so it would be chaotic, right? So we can do the chaos, uh, uh, chaos part. Good. What about Goliath? How does Goliath act? Good. Goliath is excitable. He's got an impetuous temperament. Remember, impetuous. Whoa, whoa. Um, is when you act very impulsively. You don't really think too much, and then you just go. You're like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. What about William? How does he act? Good. William is shy and timid. All right. Is there anything else that we can say about how they act? The the best just about his son and her son. Juvenile just means his age. Yeah, so he's probably like a teenager ish. Yeah, that's a good way to talk about how they act. The family members will help each other out. Good. I think that's a good amount of stuff right there about how they act and what they look like. Okay. All right. And then we need to answer those two questions that are there. Why do you think Dr. Goodall included all these descriptions? What's the point? Okay. So to give the idea a reader, or no, sorry, <laughs> to give the reader an idea of how they look and act. So she added these descriptions to show how the chimpanzees look and act. Okay.
Okay, and the second question there, how does that help us as the readers understand the chimpanzees better? Why does that help us? So we're getting more information about them. Yeah, we're getting more information about them. We get to know um, hmm? how they act around humans. They kind of act, like Mr. Turner was saying, like little children, right? Like some of them are shy and timid. They can be very hyper. Some of them are stubborn. They want what they want, and they're not going to stop until they get it. So they act very human-like, right? They have a lot of human characteristics. Mm -hmm. So it helps us understand how chimpanzees act. How the chimpanzees act? Probably around humans. They probably act the same with or without humans around, though, right? Once they got used to the fact that the humans were there and not leaving, they probably just acted the same as they did before. Yeah, when you're done, you can close it. <laughs> okay, I'll give you about. One minute here. Guys, as you grow older and you're thinking about what kind of career to get into, if you like monkeys and apes and stuff, you could become a primatologist. You could become a physical anthropologist. To join the Air Force. But if you guys are working your way through school, be thinking what do you eventually want to become? What kind of career do you want to have? Alrighty. So, like I said, that's all we're going to do together, but I do want you guys to uh, finish those up. I'm going to close this, just so you know, so that it's closed. I did a lot there. Holy cow. Here we go. So close read the text is what we just did together. If you didn't finish it, maybe watch the video later or answer them on your own. The one that I do want you to do on your own is analyze the text. So this is a little bit more um, just about the different parts of the story. But I want you guys to try these ones on your own. So it says respond to these questions and the cites the textual evidence to support your answers. So provide examples from the story. I think there's only three questions here. Yep. The first one is to make an inference. What did David Graybeard's visits do uh, to Dr. Goodall's camp show about the chimpanzee's changing response to her presence? So it's been about a year, and maybe a year and a half, and David Graybeard starts coming to the camp. How does that change everything for Dr. Goodall? You'll write that answer there. Number two is speculate. How might understanding the chimpanzee's system of gestures and calls, so how they communicate with each other, change the way that people think about the animals? So they discovered that chimpanzees will make gestures to each other, they call to each other out in the wild. How does that change the way we thought about them? Did we know a lot about them before? No, not really. So how did that change how we thought about them? And then finally, this is more of a question for you guys. How can, the, the question that we're talking about for this whole unit is how can people and animals relate to each other? So, from this memoir, the story that Jane Goodall has told us, um, what have you learned about how people and animals interact with each other? And how has it changed your thinking at all? But there's three questions there for you to answer. Those are the three that I would like you to work on on your own. Those of you online, um, finish those up. 